Okay, uh, it being 7.30, I'm going to open our meeting tonight. For the record, uh, this meeting is being recorded. And um, I think we will begin this evening with the 9 Mill Street, the informal discussion. So, uh, gentlemen. Thank you. Um, so let, first, let me introduce myself. I'm Joe Parisi, new director of public works. So yep. So I don't know if uh, you have any kind of, uh, digital um, projections, but I do have some hot uh, copies here that I can pass around. And help with the discussion. Yeah, if you could, yeah. that'd be great. Yeah, you want them? Oh, it's okay. I okay. Right, thank you. So, um, it, I'll talk briefly and then I'll perhaps hand it off to uh, Mark to maybe give us some more details as he's more into it uh, than I am on this. But, you know, since I've been here, basically, the, uh, it was told to me that there was a house that was purchased. Um, uh, I don't know how many years ago now, but certainly had a lot of acreage. There was actually a water line that the town um, has going through this property with an easement on it. And so it was thought that this property would be valuable for a pump station at some point in time in the future for perhaps getting some, some water um, from Reading or some other potential sources or, um, or needs. So, you know, it is a, uh, a, a lot of land that we want to sort of keep and in some uh, fashion, not the, the house though that came along with it. So the goal here is to really, you know, divide the property, uh, the, the open uh, acreage with the water line and the house lot um, from each other so that we can, uh, you know, sell the house and, and keep the land with the water lot on it. And, and potentially have, you know, that area to be uh, built upon in the future with a, with a water pump station or, you know, generator, who knows what, what the use is, but it already has a water line physically there. If there's a water line break there, we obviously are going to go in there and maintain it. So that, that's the intent. Now the question is, well, how to do all that? How to separate it and, and sort of, you know, not spend, you know, a ton of money on this. We, we do want to make some money back on the, the purchase that, of the house, but we, we certainly uh, think in the future, if there's going to be some development of, of a pump station or so, we would certainly do what it takes to make proper access to the back lot. I think currently, you know, there's sufficient adequate access to the house lot with the drive, driveway that's always been there. Mm -hmm. And I hope you can see that, you know, underneath the color, you know, pink and, and orange, but that, that certainly is, you know, been the access for this house off, off of the um, Mill Street. So, so what we, I think, came down to to try to make uh, this parcel conforming to, to the degree that we can is to, is to reserve an area of land that creates a sort of a, a roadway into the uh, back lot of the cul-de-sac, uh, provides, you know, sufficient um, frontage uh, for both lots um, with the adequate access of the house lot from the existing driveway and and you know potentially some future um, development will will do improvements to the roadway at that point in time. You know nothing really needs to happen. I think at this point to change you know the land to cut down trees or any of that until some point in the future. So that that's the I guess the big picture of what we're trying to accomplish here. And, um, you know, Mark, I don't think you have anything to add, but we certainly will answer any questions that you have. Uh, yeah, just I'll take one step back sure. on the, the history of this lot, as you guys are probably familiar. At one time, we were looking at getting water from MWRA through Mill Street in Reading. Um, we went out and bought this property about the same time we bought that and over stepped back into the picture and said, look, we already supply you water. We can meet all your needs. It would be cheaper without the, uh, 
the buy-ins and the infrastructure will have to do to go to the MWRA. So we purchased this lot and then have never had a use for it. Um, one thought was to sell it off as is, but there's been a lot of sentiment that they're not creating any more land in town. We own a piece of land. We can keep a piece of land that we could use in the future, as Joe was referring to. And we don't have a need for the house. The DPW is obviously not in the, uh, the business of maintaining single family houses. So we've been trying to uh, look at how to sell this property for actually quite an extended time. Um, so only got, the total property has only 95 feet of frontage on Mill Street. So obviously to split it into two, you can't get two you know, limited frontage lots at 50 feet each out of 95 feet. So we've consulted with the, uh, the building commissioner, with Danielle to an extent, and, and this is kind of the plan that we've come up with um, and we're presenting to you tonight. So. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if you, um, however, if you create this cul-de-sac, then you solve both problems. You give frontage for that lot as well as for the lot in the back. You create the frontage if you create this cul-de-sac. Is that the intent? To actually construct a roadway? Well, I mean, you could, um, I mean, you could lay it out. If you did a layout so that at the future, if you needed to construct it or something, you'd have you know, a layout that would actually make both lots legal. Sure. I, I mean, it's a, it's a concept that's done by developers on a regular basis. Designing a, a, the layout of the roadway? Yeah, well, uh, putting in a cul-de-sac in order to create frontage. <laughs> you get the whole all the way around the cul-de-sac is frontage for the lot in the back. And, the, and along the side of it is frontage for the, uh, for the other lot. So you can create the frontage that you need um, to make both lots legal. I think the concern that, that I think the only concern we had when we looked at this in the beginning was creating uh, uh, two lot, non-conforming lots. You know, and uh, we don't, we kind of frown on developers and the Board of Appeals has I think, stood with us on this in not allowing people to take variances in frontage because once you start down there, that's a slippery slope. So um, having a way to, to um, make both of these lots legal, that, that's, and, this, and this is exactly what a, what a, a developer would have done, is put in a, a road in the cul-de-sac, because now the road and the cul-de-sac become the frontage for the two lots. Right, and that is the, the intent that this would be a, a, a laid out roadway with a, with a cul-de-sac right. for the proper right. frontage. So uh, I guess the question is, would you need a, um, a set of plans that you know, officially lays out that from the, from the area sur uh, survey plan? I, I think it would be a, I, I don't think it's that difficult and I think it would be a good idea. Yeah. Right. I think it would be a good idea to have it and uh, have it and then bring it in and have it uh, approved. Now, whether you construct it or not, having it approved and maybe doing renewals on that approval um, as you go along uh, every three years or so to make sure that you keep, um, um, to keep this in place so it doesn't expire, if you will, that will, that will allow you to, uh, to have that frontage. Because we have had situations where a cul-de-sac was put in but not built all the way out. So we have allowed that. So there is a little bit of precedent there for you to do that. Okay. Okay. Well, well we, we certainly can go uh, back to the uh, engineering firm to draw up uh, a set of plans that you can sure. you know, approve and sign and we can record yep. at the Registry of Deeds. That's the best plan. Right. I'm going to let the rest of the board, you got, you got any comments on? Yeah, I'm curious about just the, the balance of the parcel. It looks like there's opportunity for more than one buildable parcel on this. The, the reason I don't believe else. because of uh, what the wetlands area uh, within, within the parcel. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, that was so yeah. that's kind of my next question. You got anything, Dave? Yeah. No, I agree with you. Okay. Just get it engineered. I have, a, I have a question. Go ahead, Chris. So, I can, there is no, presently no water line in the ground. There is a 20 foot no. easement, is that correct? There is a water line that went in in the mid 70s. So, this the parcel on the corner of Park Street and Main Street where the three office condos are yep. and the parcel at, I believe it's 364 Park Street, were all one property at one time. Okay, yeah. At that time, we actually put a water main in. It was basically to attempt to loop the water on Mill Street. There's no way to back, circulate back that. Into so physically, the water main goes through this property and goes out through 364 Park Street. So I, and it, I think I see the, the, the uh, easement. Yep. I can see that easement coming you know, from, what's north? Oh, from the north, coming down into, into you know, the, the, the parcel here uh, towards uh, lot 3B. 
and then it turns and then it goes back down the, the right of way, is that correct? Correct, so it, 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 it kind of <coughs> is a little bit north of where the, uh, the pink roadway is shown. Where it, it intersects Mill Street. Kind of underneath yeah. that, but. Okay. So it's But it does come out, so it comes uh, from the north of the property, so this would be 364 Park right. Street. It comes through their property onto this yep. property, comes down like this, kind of sweeps around, and comes right back out to Park Street to connect to the water okay. in Park Street. Okay. So, so the parcel to the north of the cul-de-sac area, that's, that's North Reading's property, correct? That, that was part of the 3.2, that's part of the 3.2 acres. Correct. Up here. And that, that's, looks like, it looks like, I don't know, is there, there may be wet, there are wetlands in there. Yeah, there's no how much, is there, is it all wet? So, pretty wet. <coughs> it's pretty wet all the way yeah, through looks, there. Yeah, it's yeah. well. Kind of. It's all wet through there. So we're, we're showing this, and this actually came from when we were, our conceptual plans for the pump station from the town of Reading. Mm -hmm. We're not saying that there is a plan to build this at any time. We don't really have a defined use for it. Okay. But yes, there's wetlands that go on this piece of the property, and then there's wetlands that kind of sweep around. This is the actually the Ipswich River is right. the southern border, but there's wetlands off that that kind of come around all the way to this point. So the house itself is on uplands. This kind of sliver through the middle is on uplands, but there are wetlands on, on either, either side. side of that. Okay. I was just thinking, could you can you break off that upper, that that north easterly lot there? No. But it looks like it's too wet. Yeah. There's no wet. There's yeah. no yeah. Yeah. One time we were trying to get the, I think it's 125,000 square feet for a conforming lot right. with. Yeah. And we had kind and of a lot. It was a reverse C-shape, kind of giving all the wetlands to the house. Um, yeah. And then we <coughs> took a step back from that. So we've gone through a number of iterations on what to do here. We actually right. met with the ZBA at the end of May, um, and that's when you guys had offered a letter, and so yeah. that's why we're here tonight, is basically okay. to try to resolve where we were at the end of May to right. this plan to, right. you know, what can we bring forward. Yeah. Um, quick discussions, I don't know that if it's, with this plan, I don't know that we need a ZBA variance, because there are no variances on it at this point, so we no. might be able to right. withdraw Just, it from them and yeah. then we'll proceed we'll with. And, and we had talked, Warren and I had talked about this, and I talked to Joe about this also, and having that engineered plan is the way to go, I think. <clears throat> it makes it so much easier. Yeah. It get, gets the frontage where it needs to be, and it, and it keeps us from creating a situation that we're going to look bad at. Right. Basically, bathroom. basically what it does, the town follows the rules that's making everybody else follow, and I sure. think that's an important thing for not, us to not do. Not a so. problem. In fact, <laughs> I think you know, we had that intention to do so. We just want to make sure we're yeah. going down the right you know, path. I believe you are. So if yep. we are, then yep. we'll, we'll proceed with uh, you know, doing some engineering work on the plane. Good. Can Thank I ask you. one more question? I mean, if you build the, the pumping station to kind of where the southern portion of that cul-de-sac is, would that free up the back area for another buildable lot? Well, look, we're not developers. We're not looking for more than buildable lots. We, we're looking to house a, a, an infrastructure, water infrastructure, you know, yeah. for the town. Right. Um, you know, if within you know that one lot we need to build a couple of different um, structures, you know, maybe a like I said, a generator and a pump house or some other thing, mm -hmm. we can do it all within that one lot. We don't need to have separate lots. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying for us. I'm saying to, to sell. No, uh, no we, we would have no interest in, in selling any more of this land. Just, uh, just a house and what's sufficient uh, for area around that. And then just keeping the rest. Yeah, because it has a water money. line in it and, and everything that we want yeah. to retain for whatever use we could have in the future. And then we you want to limit, limit what we yeah, have. We own a lot of land use. for future nebulous uses that we never Well, you know, use. That's, I think <coughs> there's wisdom in holding on to that land because I believe that there's there may be other uses that the town would have in this uh, health and. and this is a nice clean deal, and we'll um, and we'll have that for the future if we need it for something. If they s they split that one lot off, Ryan, then they still have the two yeah. two acres behind it, and they yeah. if if they find later on what they need, and they can do that in one area, then they maybe they'll split that off and, and yeah. future you know, future planning future, yeah future, future planning and what the needs but are. Right now they want to keep the two Options acres, and it's a there's a lot of wetlands in there, so they're also protecting that. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of wet back there if you go back. There. I feel like there's a lot of these parcels around town that we're stowing away for future use. Mm -hmm. And then the use goes away, and then we continue to stow them away for well, one, future one, uses. That one thing about this one is it does already have you know, the water line on the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. Sir, I'm just saying. No, not just an easement, a water line on the ground. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I thought there was a future one. Like, no, 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 that's no, in the ground. In that's why. That's why I was clarifying. I, I yeah. apologize. That's okay. Clarifying. Not a problem. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. Right. I yes. think you're on the right path. So Daniel has a question. I just need a question, just with regard to how we would handle the subdivision. Um, the property doesn't have frontage now because it will be unconstructed. So if we did approve a subdivision to allow this new cul-de-sac to act as frontage, we just want to be sure. I, I just want to make sure I understand how we're handling that. If we're allowing the frontage to be the paper street layout. I mean, the building inspectors communicated to me that he wouldn't recognize frontage until it was at least a gravel accessible way. So I'm, I just need to make sure I understand if this does, does come in for a subdivision, the, to, to sell the lot now, but to construct the way later that gives it frontage, I just want to make sure that won't be problematic yeah. for us, since I know with other properties like the Cedar Street subdivision, for example, we've told people they couldn't do that. So I just want to be sure I understand if they're going to do the work to do a subdivision plan. I want to be sure I understand how that will, will need to work. Okay, do you understand the question? Well, I, I think I do. <coughs> I'm going back and forth on this. You know, I, I guess my, my view of it is that, um, you know, we have an existing house lot that has adequate access. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I can I can clear some shrubs and throw some gravel down and you know make a path or a road along 200 foot of that that house lot. But why? You know, really why? You know, um, <coughs> as far as the other lot, I don't really need to get access to that. Right. I'm not looking to build. So again, why disturb what's there, make a mess of things until the full picture is known as to what to build? I would like to present and, and actually have the survey done of the roadway that will be separated out from all the other areas, have the two different lots be able to record that. And I think every developer, you know, goes through that process. Record, and at some point they'll start building when they want to get their money back, right? A little different here. We don't want to necessarily sell the back lot. Yeah. We're going to retain that. We just want I, to sell the house lot. I think this is a little different too, Danielle, in that the they're not looking for a building permit because the house and everything that already exists. Yeah, I mean, you, you could So we're not going to have to go to the building inspector. You know, we'll come back later and deal with that. Okay. But would the house not then become non-conforming? I mean, I, that's, I, it's fine. I'm not trying to stand yeah, in yeah, the way of, yeah. a, of a good plan. Um, I just, yeah. you know, I just want to make sure I understand when the subdivision is dealt yeah. with, I, I want to know how we're going well, to. I mean, well, I mean, again, I, we've had a situation where a cul-de-sac was developed, was, was put in, mm -hmm. But it was not built; just a, 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 a turnaround was put in it. But the cul-de-sac was still there, in uh, on the plan. Right. So, I mean. So this this is going to be a similar situation. It may be stretching it a little bit, but I, but I think it's legitimate in that once the plan is done and it's approved, um, because we're not looking for a building permit, there's an existing yeah. house that has also some frontage. On the I mean, I'm, if, I'm, if I may, I mean, certainly that back lot, you, we can stamp that. Uh, not billable until, until such time road is improved. Yeah, you know? yeah. I, I get a, one more question. When, we're, when I'm looking at the access right now, you've got the orange lot, and then you've got the red, and the red that where it comes out, that's 50 feet. Is that correct? Right on Mill Street? Right here? Right there. That is uh, a little bit less than 50 feet. We're keeping it out of the, out of the wetlands area, but we've, um, uh, we've got about 41 feet there. No, I guess it would be illusory then, wouldn't it? It is. I, I'm not saying what, what I'm do saying it, is, is, is the rest, the the rest of that area is larger than 50 feet. This right here. Yeah, because right then, then what you do is you change the, you, you have to cur give them, give the house lot um, more room back, 50 feet, so that you've got enough to create the. The, the, the frontage. No, the frontage, oh, and, yeah. and then it's got its own frontage. Oh, but it's not it's not big enough anymore. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, we we went round and round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah no, it's not big enough anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's the so I, so I think we landed here, and I think we're in a good spot. Yeah. And, and again, we'll come back. It's with it's. These I understand areas. Danielle's yep. Danielle's issue. Yeah. Well, it's the you know the building. It's, it's doing some it. building yeah. it out so yeah. that you know it doesn't come back and bite us. Yeah. Uh, yeah <sighs> we, we certainly don't want to you know deem this a billable lot if we need to have you know built roadway yeah, right so you can see yeah, but this is already built the palm and i'm looking for any yeah project. but it, it you took away its frontage yeah because you, but, but you basically subdivided it yeah but we're going to create the frontage again with 
Yeah. Yeah, but then that's, that's only yeah, it's paper, and the question well, is. Well, it's, it's it's got the it's got the uh, driveway that comes into it. It's got adequate access mm -hmm. for a sufficient, <coughs> you know, number of feet. Yeah. And I can I can you know certainly you know, do a little bit, but I don't know that it really is necessary to sort of you know, do when more I would, of that. When I would, when I would, the access is already there. You know what I would encourage you to do at this point is to get those get the designs done, get yeah. the, get it drawn, <coughs> and take a look at and take a look at the possibility of doing something to and maybe maybe uh, converse with the building inspector about what he's going to want to see in order sure. to make this li you know because we really have to he's really our our yeah he, he's so he's going to yeah. understood I'll, I'll meet with the building inspector we'll Jerry, go down yeah. there take a look I, you yeah. know, I understand what your situation yeah. is and yeah so let's let's uh, let's keep, you're on the right path so I'd say keep yeah. going very good keep going and then uh, but do talk to the building inspector about how le what level of work might need to be done for him to be happy. So. Understood. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. There Thank you. you. Go. All right. Have a good night. Thanks. Okay, why don't we uh, take a look at, we got a couple of ZBAs, do we? Do you have ZBAs, Daniel? Yes, we do. Um, one of them was the 200 River Park project that we um, uh, voted on at the last meeting. Um, so I'm assuming our comments would be in support. And just to note that we did approve the, the site plan for that. I don't know if you wanted to add anything more. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. No, I think we're all set with that. Um, any comments? Just a little, a little blurb saying we support that, right? So Pardon? We, you, want to, you want to send the ZBA a little, <coughs> you know. Yeah, well, we, we already voted on that. Yeah, right? we, 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 we voted in support yeah, so of it. Yeah, so you can tell them we support that. Yeah. Okay. Definitely tell them we support that. Because <coughs> we basically, we did. Yes. Yep. <laughs> we voted it, so. Okay. <coughs> okay, so uh, 12 Nutter Road. Uh, has everybody read the blurb yeah. on that? Um, Danielle, this is this is what your file gives me. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. What? Uh, oh, I don't mind. Uh, Does it matter? No, now it's coming. It oh, just kind of slapped um, aside. Of it. Um, okay, any uh, any comments on that? Um, uh, uh, um, it seems to fit within the four corners. I mean, the, like do, you, do you have any comments on the uh, 12th Nutter Road? I mean, it seems to, it's home <coughs> occupation, sounds like it's just an office. Right. Obviously, they're going to be, they should, the common, give the, uh, the common um, conditions that they're in, you know, people aren't coming to the house to be treated or anything like that, you know, that it's in the, the client's home. <coughs> as long as it's, that's made clear, I think that's probably just fine. Yeah. So, sounds like the application. Yeah. Sound okay to you guys? No, no issue. Okay. Looks like. Uh, tell them we don't see any issue with that, but okay. you know, again, standard conditions. Sure. So. I'm supposed to have share file. That's how I'm supposed to be able to get to this meeting, right? You can, if it's you don't have it on there, you can always look at the CPC website where the meeting materials. Like no, I have mine put it on. That's why I was wondering. Oh. You can go right. to the internet and look at it. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Okay. I thought it was raining again. Hmm. Okay, we got some minutes here. Let's take a look at what we got here. Ryan, would you uh, make a motion on a couple sets of minutes there? Do you have? Mr. Pierce. Mr. Carroll. Mr. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Carroll. to accept the minutes dated May 18, 2021. Second. 
I have a motion and a second. Is there any corrections or comments? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Let the record show four in favor, um, no opposed. And Mr. Johnson is not with us this evening. Mr. <coughs> Carroll. Mr. Pierce, I move to accept the minutes dated June 1st, 2021. Second. I have a motion seconded by Mr. Redloff. Is there any comments, questions, or? Yeah, there was some grammatical error, if I could find it. <laughs> Can't put sticky notes on this one. Oh. <laughs> I could on my other one. Yeah. Minor. Yeah, it was minor. Let's roll with it then. All right. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? If you're not all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Let the record show four in favor, no opposed. And um, Mr. Johnson is not with us this evening. So. Uh, 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 <coughs> okay, take care of that. Oh, you know what? Um, no, okay, we're good there. So, you know, we could do that 265 Main Street. That's not going to be too much of a big deal, I don't think. I don't think so. Let's do that. 265 Main Street. Yes, please. Good evening. Uh, Michael Dolan from the law firm of Brown, Rudnick, here on behalf of the applicant uh, Volta Charging. Uh, Volta is a national electric vehicle charging station company, and uh, my client's proposing to install two units um, in the uh, parking lot of the Stop and Shop on Main Street. Um, what we'll be doing or proposing to do is restrike two of the existing parking spaces. Uh, to denote that it is an electric vehicle charging station spot. And then adjacent to it is the um, uh, charging station with the line that would run into the car. In the northerly spot that you'll see on the digital uh, version of the plans, um, the uh, charging station itself will go in a triangular portion of a striped uh, area adjacent to the proposed charging uh, stall um, and on the southerly location uh, what we're proposing is putting the charging station in the uh, uh, island adjacent to the uh, parking spot there um, for that one we will obviously uh, uh, make sure that we there's a tree in that little landscaped area we're going to protect that while we do our work there's only a minimal amount of the uh, uh, existing island that would need to be uh, converted into that um, uh, charging station. The, the stop and shop is thrilled. Uh, they have an understanding that uh, customers are very excited about the electricity is free for vehicles unlike, and, you know, you don't have to have a Tesla to get a Tesla spot. Anybody can use these spots. Um, and we are seeking a minor modification to the site plan uh, in order to uh, Hopefully, uh, obtain your approval to do that. Okay, side of the times, actually. Yes. Uh, but I have a couple generic questions, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, the the um, cord that goes to plug into the cars is that universal between all of the <coughs> electric cars? Is everybody? I mean, I know for like the OBD2 <coughs> systems, the in the OBD1 systems, you had to have nine different connectors in order to test the car. When they went to the OBD2 system, in yeah, the cars, it's a good question. It became a single. Everybody has the exact same plug. Yeah, this is a level two charging station. I'll let my uh, John, John from uh, Volta, John Lawrence from Volta Charging, answer that more directly. But sure. So, so the plug we use is a, it's a level two charger, and it's called a uh, J1772. It'll charge every single car that's out on the market. Uh, the only exception to that is a Tesla. But when you buy a Tesla, they give you a little adapter. So you put that on the, the cord and you can charge. So effectively it charges 100% of the car, electric vehicles out there. Okay, good, thank you. Yep. I wondered about that, so. But uh, by comparison, a lot of the DC fast charging we see can only charge about 30% of the cars out there, and then like Tesla can only charge Teslas. So right. Level two charge everything. Right, excellent, excellent. 
Okay, any comments or questions from the board here? I guess I'm more, I'm just interested in the protection of the units themselves. Um, of Bollards. The Bollards and stuff. Yeah, the, the northerly uh, unit will have four bollards around okay. it to protect it. Um, and the other one in the, land, in the island obviously has the uh, concrete um, curving around that one. So um, those are the kind of models we've used throughout the country. They meet uh, regularly good safety practices and standards. So that's what we were proposing here. Um, we saw some comments of the um, the yeah, but I can't get the picture. I uh, had a comment about that. It's ridiculous. I think our plans hopefully adequately uh, address uh, uh, we don't have Well, we have a little trouble pulling the plan. It's taken a while for Share File to bring it up. So, um, the one that's on the island, I, I wanted to see a picture of it to see if, if it might make sense to put one bollard in the front. Oh, well, um, I, have a, I have a photo of. Uh, I apologize, it's Google Earth, so it has some snow in it, but that's essentially, uh, we're far from that right now, but that's essentially, uh, this is the tree in the middle, and we'd be proposing it right there. Okay, so my, uh, okay, so on the other side of that, can you, can I, let me see. On the other side of what? Let me see. Yeah. It's, it's over here, over here, on this side. Is this just so th this is the main thoroughfare in front of the, uh, okay. the stop and shop. So this my is only, the last spot. So my only thought would be that if you're going to put one right here that you put with somebody swinging into this parking lot going up on the curb and going in, um, just one baller in the front to protect it. Okay. That, if that makes sense. Sure. I know. Because, I mean, that's where they're going to get. And the other okay. thing that occurs to me is that in the wintertime, see how that snow's pushed back? Yep. Pushed back past where your unit's going to go. That so I would say that if you put one ball in the loader. front, you're going to prevent that as well. Yeah. Okay? Just a thought. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Pierce, over. <clears throat> Mr. Hayden. So the fire department wants to get uh, a disconnect switch that they can access through their uh, Knox box. So it's a lock switch and the keys within the Knox box. Yeah, yeah and, and my client has uh, familiarity with doing that. Um, it's not the first time that's been requested, and we can comply with that. There may be a, uh, a specific detail to how our system is set up for that uh, in, in connection with that purpose, but rest assured it would meet the spirit of that request, and we would obviously do whatever the fire department wanted before we'd ever install it. I think there might be, I'd ask my client about that, because uh, Danielle had sent along that comment previously, and they said there was one uh, technical aspect to it, they might have to run by an engineer, but whatever we did would be satisfactory to the fire department first. Yeah, once you come up with your solution, I would suggest you go just go down and talk to the fire department. Yeah, they're, well, they're very accessible, okay. you know, and, and you know, you go down there with what you want, and if, they'll tell you right away if it's going to meet their, their needs. You know, they're just trying to keep people safe. Absolutely. The electrical yeah. code actually requires <laughs> That if you have an, uh, an electri electrical unit of some kind, that they, that visually you can see the shutoff switch for it. Okay. So you have to be able to do that because when you do when we do installs at houses and everything the, yeah. for pumps and so forth, there has to be a switch that you can see from where the pump is to see that it's turned off before you handle anything there. So, I mean, although this unit is meant to be handled live, so <laughs> that's how right. that works. But uh, but I know the electrical uh, inspector will probably want that. That's that shutoff switch. Mr. Chairman, I have a question too. Yes, so go ahead, is, is, uh, it seems there's only two. I mean, what? obviously, this is a start. I, I, is the plan to add more based on demand? And do you have Conceivably, enough? Conceivably, I think they're going to test the waters. Right. And if, yeah. You know, the people in North Reading want this more. They'll they'll right. probably go do it. Yeah. Because the one the one I guess it would be south here too is almost really serving you know other other retail, uh, the other one north there is certainly uh, That's right. So stop there could be some shared use, yeah. although Stop and Shop mm -hmm. probably would like to see it primarily there. Right. right. Is there a sufficient conduit size to feed additional ones? You know, I see three quarter and all that stuff underground. Yeah, typically, we only run one four inch conduit to, to each one. Oh, it's a four? Okay, so I was looking more, I think, the ones that are in the building. 
you get on underground four. Would, would the four be adequate, though, to, again, for, for all that work you're doing for electrical, are you set up so that you could add more? T typically, they can pull us, like, if we wanted to, the one on the south, if we wanted to put another station on that, we would be able to pull, pull a little uh, choir through there. Okay. We, we tend to space them out the way that you see them here. Um, because of the media component, we want to get kind of the most bang for our bucks. Right, right. We kind of se separate them. Okay. But th there are cases where grocers come back to us. We've actually had complaints that there's not enough charging, and in that case, we'll come back and um, you know install more. And is, is there uh, the one where you're um, again the south one where you come across perpendicular to the face of the building, and then you jog and then go parallel to the island? Is there a reason you're doing that versus just jumping the island? <coughs> and, like pull there, I see. A TV. Just curious why you would. Uh, Are you talking about how, how we're coming? Out of the building? Well, out of the building, no problem. Perpendicular, right? Out, and then as you approach the island, you're, you're banking south again and then over to this charging station. Just curious if, uh, is it, is, wouldn't you want to just get into the island? Or is there an obstruction? If I think I'm understanding you correctly, stop and shop is. What he's saying is, yeah. would you just straight from here and then go down as opposed to coming like five down that way? Um, yeah, we could we could look at that. I'm well, I'm not I'm not I'm yeah, telling no, you no, how to do it. Yeah. I, was, I was just curious. Are you? Uh, so it seems like a lot more because you, you're this is a trench, right? You're not jacking this. This is a this is you're going right across. Yeah, this would be, right? be a trench. Yeah, um, yeah, we, we could yeah I mean, quite frankly, this is how Stop and Shop wants us to do it. So that's yeah, just doing it. Yeah. That's what we do. Yeah. I have no problem with it. I was <laughs> just asking. It, it may be something that Stop and Shop has there that they know about that they have really yeah, disclosed. They, <laughs> They've been more involved in our conduit designs than, than any right. customer we've ever dealt with. Like, right. particularly where we come out of the building and make sure that the facade isn't um, yeah. messed with at all. Understood. Is there something in that area? No. Something's in that So, no. so, so it, it's right. further over. Right next to Starbucks, right? Right? Right next to Starbucks, right? Yeah, well, it's it's the middle, 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 middle front. Yeah, it's in the middle of it's two big islands. Front. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> the subject is next to yeah. Starbucks, right? Yeah. Well, no, there's actually. There's actually three systems there. Well, actually, the the new one is around behind the building now, and so everything on the on, on the on the uh, southern end of that has been collected now. Runs around the back, and there's a treatment plant out back. Now. Oh, okay. Oh. But there is still a system in the very front that feeds stop and shop. Stop shop's not tied into the treatment plant. Oh, all right. No, they ha gotcha. it has a bioclear system out front. There, so. Oh, okay, I know that's right yep. that area. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I just happen to know. <laughs> Oh, that's your um, <laughs> business. Sure. I was just going to suggest um, I had drafted um, an approval letter for this, and I put a condition in it that says the fire department will be given a remote disconnect switch within sight of the charging station, which would be keyed to the fire department's lockbox key. I could add something to that that says, you know, comma, or another a solution that is agreeable to the fire department subject to their final approval or something yeah, like that, that just to be sure you're not locked into that. Yeah, yeah okay. that's on that. Yeah, sense. sure. Yeah. Don't, don't. Don't lock them down. Yeah, I, think little, you, the I think you're gonna, spot, let them I think it's going to be as much input from the electrical inspector as from the fire department. The fire department <coughs> just wants access. The electrical inspector is going to want code. So that's where you're going to, that, that the two have to cross someplace there. So. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, any other questions or comments? So uh, hearing none, do you, uh, we have a, a, a motion here for a minor modification. I would agree that this is a minor modification. I don't. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I don't think there's any uh, um, huge issues here as far as site plan or anything like that. So, um, and I do, uh, if you make sure the bollards are on the plan and everything that you bring to us, if we voted tonight, then um, you'd have to bring a plan with all of these changes on it. Including the locations of the switches and all that, for us okay. to sign before you could work with it. And everything. Okay, Mr. Carroll, if you would please. Mr. Pierce, I move that the Community Planning Commission vote to grant the budget of nine modification and approve the plan entitled Volta Stop and Shop number 2406, North Reading, phase 1, 265 Main Street, North Reading, Mass 01864, dated March 11, 2021, drawn by Kimmy Horn, with conditions as noted in the mine modification approval letter dated June 15, 2021, as amended this evening. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second by Mr. Rudloff. Is there any further questions? Uh, hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Let the record show four in favor, no opposed. Thank you, sir, very much. Thank, Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Work perfectly. I mean, would you prefer to keep using the iPad or would you prefer? Small and it's convenient. I was thinking that maybe uh, if you could schedule something next Wednesday, including the guy okay, who um, all here. Okay, we're going to go to, uh, we'll go to 110 124 Main Street. A special I I opened up uh, permit request uh, to continue public hearing. <coughs> Good evening. Bill Hall with Civil Design Consultants. Yes, Bill. Representing the applicant. Main Street, the uh, Reading Lumber site, and uh, previously we were before you on uh, in May, I believe it was, uh, to discuss the project. Since then, we have been back to the Conservation Commission. We have uh, got their approval. Uh, we got all the peer review sign-offs. Uh, at the last hearing, we had discussed some notes for outdoor storage, so I revised the plan to put a couple labels on there to reference two new notes on the plan, notes 13 and 14. Uh, those both reference outdoor storage, both under the front facade and then in the rear and sides of the building. Um, that's really the only change to the plan that's been made since uh, now and then. So if the commission has any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Okay, and you say you have your conservation commission approval. Correct. Okay, any uh, comments or questions from the board? And building inspector is all set with this too, as far as your ele floor elevations and all that? Floor elevations, yes. Your floor elevations, yes. yes so. I think he's still concerned about the, the storage of outside materials, so. No, that's the 13 and 14. Yeah, yeah, no, I saw that. I mean, I didn't, did he see that since his, did you read his note? Since the three, since that? No. I don't know if it's been before or after. I did think the building inspector see notes 13 and 14 on a plan? Because uh, I, I read his, his memo that said that he was concerned about the storage. So hmm. he, he wanted to know who the entities were who were leasing storage. Okay. My question was, is that storage area specific enough for, for you to approve as outdoor storage? I just want to be sure that you're satisfied with how it's shown. Okay. You mean the descriptions in number 13 and 14? Whether right. those are complete enough? products for sale. Well, I guess I was wondering, do you need a border? Do you need anything about fencing? I mean, I guess those were my questions. Well, our bylaw requires fencing. Yeah, and there's no fencing here. I noticed that. This, the site is wide open when the, when the, when the facility is closed, um, which is kind of interesting. You could drive right behind that building. I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised that they don't have a security issue. Yeah, and the notes are good, but they don't limit it to any particular area, right? Right. Which is, I think, how we're going to right now. Because they just started storing stuff everywhere. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, it says that they're not going to do that anymore. That it won't be uh, stored, um, should not be allowed to the sides of the existing building without approval. 
we've had stuff in before and they've done it anyways. Well, I, my comment would be if they're gonna if they plan to keep it behind the building, put it on the plan where it's gonna be, that way the building inspector's got some teeth if he goes down there right. and somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Right. It says on the plan it says it was gonna be here and now it's here. I think the idea behind this was to show where it was not gonna be. Well, no, I'm serious. I mean that 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 you know it's so that instance you know storage of materials incidental to the operation of the business would be stored out behind, you know, not on the sides of the building or someplace else. Right. But we all but the bylaw also requires that if you're going to store those materials, there be fencing, and it also says without approval of the of the planning board. So, so you know they, you know, we're not going to violate the bylaw and allow them to store without fencing. So, I mean, I think that was the intent of this. Yeah. So do you think there needs to be more verbiage there to, um, to um, make it clearer? I mean, it seems to me that the uh, intent here was to show that there was not going to be any storage on the sides of the building, not necessarily, um, not necessarily where it was going to be stored, because any place other than that would, for all intents and purposes, be fair game, out behind the building, out behind the other buildings out behind a fence. I guess if the building inspector's fine with the language. <coughs> yeah, I mean, well that, that was, you know, I... Yeah, I mean, on that new building, you could store stuff on the side and technically be in violation, but it's right. in the front of the other one. But, <laughs> so. Well, I mean, the stuff in the front is, is delineated as far as what it's gonna be. But does it, do, do, do those notes apply to all existing buildings like for instance the shed which is not noted here which uh, I, I think uh, Brady Lumber refers to it as shed one is it uh, well, so I guess the intent was uh, just behind the main building in the front because uh, as was noted there's a screen requirement and um, really the way the site is it's raised in the front it's lower in the rear if they're storing stuff behind the main building it's you're not really going to see it from the street Okay. So it was the intent to have it behind the main building. And as the chair said, um, it's really more of an intent to show where they're not going to store it because um, really what they do now is if they get paving stones and lumber, plywood, things like that, sometimes they have to move stuff around to make room. So they didn't really want to be limited by certain fenced in areas for their storage for day to day operations. I think the only way you could approve it if it had a limit on either end of the building for the extent of the storage behind, but to your point, with it being lower, I don't know that you're really going to notice yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, it is quite a bit lower. So you could store quite a bit and not see it driving by. Right. And really, the sides of the building are the dry mile, right? Well, the other thing I would say that is, is however, this is um, that in the future, there'll, there'll probably be some oversight. In other words, the building inspectors will it's probably going to go look, and yeah. they're probably going to look <coughs> to make sure that if they do begin to store, that they that they be in violation, or that they would uh, that it be necessary to fence it, as it says in the bylaw. Yeah. So it may behoove them to put some short pieces of fencing up in the corners, at the very least, to provide them with some uh, protection for anything they might be storing out there. So. Okay. And I would recommend that. Mr. Yeah. Hayden, you got I agree with you. Okay. I agree with you. You'll be a little it's, proactive. It's always, it's always been Get them to be a little proactive in the fencing and in the protection and everything so that we don't run into a problem with it. Okay. All right. I know this has been a long road for you, so. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there were things that had to be done. I mean, and they were all very good. I mean, they were very absolutely correct with their floor above the floodplain. I mean, it's only good for you. Yep. In Absolutely. the end, so I mean, everything that was done so far, I think, is actually helping you. So, um, so we'd like to continue to do that, but we'd like you to cooperate too. So, yep. help us. So, do you have anything else? Are we comfortable with a vote on this? Okay, Mr. Carroll, if you would please. Mr. Pierce, I move that we the Planning Commission vote to approve the plan title 110 Main Street North Reading Mass 0164, dated February 8th, 2021. Last revised May 19, 2021, drawn by Civil Design Consultants Inc., subject to the terms and conditions of the Certificate of Conditional Approval dated June 15, 2021, as amended this evening. Second that, Mr. Pierce. Okay, a motion and a second. No. 
just before we vote, I just want to remind you that there, you may not know, but there have been issues with storage on this site before. So, um, yes. so please take that back to them. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you want to I'll make, yeah, I'll make them aware. Please yeah. do. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Let the record show four in favor, no opposed. All right. Um, thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Have it's a good nice night. to see you too. Yeah, yeah. Instead of just this much I of know. you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, sir. He's just a. He wanted to get out of the house. My show support for public meeting. So we're gonna we're gonna before we move on, and so well, it's the first live one. Just um, um, this is something I think we probably would all like you to take back to the board of selectmen, and that we, um, Chris and I were talking earlier tonight with Phil about how many people, how many more people <coughs> were involved in our meetings when we did the Zoom meetings, and how it would be, how it might be that we would be able to invite people into this meeting other than them having, because if they watch on TV, they don't participate, you know, but we had a lot of participation in our meetings, more than we've ever had before. I suggest it was probably the same on the, on the Board of Selectmen. So, um, I, I would imagine there's some technology that could allow us to do that, but it may be, uh, there may be a cost to it. So that's where the Board of Selectmen come in. <laughs> so, um, my understanding is that there will be an option based on what's, oh, okay, so let's back up a little bit. As of right now, we're back to pre-rules. Right. Because nothing got passed. Right. However, my understanding of what is in the bill is to allow pretty much to continue what was always allowed. So at any point, the select board could have voted from day one, last year, March 2020, to meet in person. That was allowed. It's just that no one was doing it because of the circumstances. Right. Right. Uh, this time around, and I cannot speak for the whole board, however, I can give a opinion that I feel that the hybrid option would be popular. Um, I also do feel that at least a quorum of the elected actual board in person would be highly desirable. I let's put it there. I so I think the 100% remote option, I, again, I can't speak for the board. I just, you know, the inclination is that it would I don't think we'd be back to where we were two weeks ago. But I do agree that the hybrid works, especially um, especially for school board, because a lot of parents can't make it out. You know, you remember when you had young kids, it becomes yes. harder. So Only one person won. Huh? Only one person won. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah. But, that, but it that's also occurs to me that, that in, uh, in the wintertime, under an inclement weather situation, a meeting would not need to be canceled. We could do like the schools do. <laughs> although, although going forward, I do believe the after September when it goes back to normal, the select board would have to revote again what was the pre-COVID rules, which is pretty much you could do hybrid. However, I do, I know, uh, clerk stats made it very clear that I, I just bring it up to your point that it cannot be used out of convenience. Right. So meaning, if there's a snowstorm, you'd have to may you still have to come in. You still have to come in. Well, we do. Three do. <coughs> yeah, and, yeah. Um, yeah. And my understanding also is, I think, were you guys on that meeting where the chair cannot be remote at any time? Or you'd have to pass on the... Yeah. The, the gavel. The gavel for that yeah. meeting. So... I have four-wheel like, drive. Uh, yeah. So do I. I, think the approach, I mean, well, let's see first where it goes. I mean, yeah, again, yeah. I'm saying yeah. that... You need a front-end motor. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I do. I do. I'm surprised they didn't vote it in. I, you know, yeah. I, I think... I think what we're talking about is not for us because for what we do looking at this stuff it's a whole lot different than reading words but maps you know looking at big maps and, and you know discussing it where we're a little closer together and pointing a question out and getting the answers between ourselves and stuff during even during the public you know during the public hearings um, we're not trying to get away from that it's bringing the other 
population into yeah, our right, meetings right. and getting their comments. Getting their input. <clears throat> and that, that really helps us. Yeah. And we got a lot of that during yeah. the, the totally, you know, Zoom meeting issues. I mean, I could only see nine people on my screen, but I would go up and see who the participants were, and we had 20 people at times. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, it was a lot of people. It was a lot of people. See, and the, you can see what we have tonight. The issue that comes after <coughs> the emergency order, then the technology is an issue. So under, if they pass an extension of the emergency order until September, <coughs> you don't really have to verify that your technology is going to work 100%. And if all of a sudden Zoom stops working, well, tough. That's part yeah. of the, what you were able yeah. to yeah. do. Yeah. So again, it's something where we, I think it was looked at before, and I don't think it's prohibitive, but I think if the state, I feel like if the state's going to mandate it, I can already see the pushback from every single locality. Well, you're going to give some money to pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Pretty much. Uh, so yeah, but I mean, if there's a way to do it, it is because then. The issue is if you don't have the proper technology, if I was under the impression that I could participate remotely and I didn't want to shovel up my car, and then I didn't get to, and then all of a sudden it stops working, now you have an issue of, well, didn't you say this would work? So again, it's a step, I, I don't know, that I don't know, but like I, I'm sure, at least till September, we, it'll be a little easier, and then after that, I mean, yeah, yeah. it should be, I mean, again, I, you know, for, for me, it's very simple. Um, I think the other only thing I've read on is that communities that do have, and I mentioned the select board meeting, it's not as straightforward. I like to joke, it's definitely not an iPhone where you can just hit the home button mm -hmm. and you can get back to square one. That's mm -hmm. how I was able to get my dad on it because I'm like, if you ever get nervous, just press the home button and you're back. Mm -hmm. So the, the question then becomes is, does it become too complicated based on what it is? Right. right. You know, because I know that, like, I mean, I'm not saying my parents are that old, but. I can tell you that they would, if it wasn't straightforward like Zoom is, it become, you know, if it becomes one of those things where it's like, well, if you want to speak, you have to type in your name and you have to press this because now, you know, as part of it, like, I, I guess. Well, that, was, uh, that, that, was, that, was, that was what we were talking to Phil about a little bit about, can we have those faces all up on the screen? Over there. Yeah, yeah. so that we can actually see them, so they can put their hand up. So they don't have to type in it, and very much the Zoom, for, the, mm -hmm. very much the Zoom format. But I do think that uh, for, yeah, that's definitely, and really the only time an issue really arises is if when the actual board wants to start doing high, high remote. Because now that becomes a. Yeah, we're not looking at, I don't think, I don't think the oh, no, board think itself is looking at going remote. We want to bring, we want to bring other people yeah. in, no, hybrid, yeah. in the hybrid setting. We want to give setting. people, especially maybe uh, people that are, that are mobile, and also, Older I was that, thinking that you know, maybe you can also do it where discretion of the board, whether a meeting goes full in person, if it's a hot topic where, you know what, we can't have 50 people yelling out here, plus have to deal with Zoom. Right, right. So, an example, if it was a hybrid, like when we had 60 people for Carpenter Drive, that could have been chaos. So mm -hmm. maybe that's one where it's like, you know what, no, nah, the CPC is going to do this 100% in person in a bigger space. Yeah. Right. I do think the chair should have the authority for that because, yeah. you know, and definitely I think, I mean, I'm way ahead of myself here, but I definitely think we're nowhere near trying to do like a town meeting that way. Oh, yeah, God, no. That's, <laughs> the, I mean, yeah. you know, that, that would just, no. you yeah. know. I there think are we some that still that already start talking about well, can we do a town meeting like that? And it's like now I think we were mostly I think what mostly we were doing is hoping to have, you know, especially when we have neighborhood issues or or subdivision, that we give the people in that whole neighborhood the opportunity, more opportunity to become involved in the in the conversation, if if they're not physically mobile or if they have like you said kids at home, you know, so that we don't exclude them. And also, it's, what's nice about it is you can sign on and just, Listen. when you hear the topic, you want to, you know, right. rather than playing, yeah. sometimes I know, what, like, we do it, like, the guessing game of just because it says, especially for the select board, just because it says 815. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah, yeah. come at so, 930 and it might be, you might be on time. Maybe. But it's <laughs> easier to, I guess, do it from your couch versus, you know, showing up and then, you know, you run out of internet waiting for it. You know, it's like I've read everything I possibly can that I'm interested in. I have to start reading about, like, you know, zoos in the 1950s. Right. Like, you can get real bored. Or, so. 
<laughs> but yeah, no, I'll pass that on because okay. it yeah. seems like that's the. Well, I mean, it, 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 there's probably going to be a cost to it, so I, the Board of Selectmen would have to. Uh, so September, though, I think the school committee's actually done it where the way they've done it is this will be a little different. They've they've just they've had all the laptops in front of them, so they're on the screen, but they've been meeting, I think, you know. In the school, I think they've been doing it for a while. Yeah. Yeah, in person, but without the audience. So it's just the board, correct? And nobody else in the room. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, we'll we should be able to figure something. Okay. And, and then first we have to see what's going to be allowed. Yeah. You know, because I'm actually curious to see that. Yeah. Uh, I, I know mean, it, it, it gets lost in translation, but we could not have done that without the governor's order. Yes. That's so. That's true. Yeah. So you do lose that. That concept, you think we could just do it because we want to, but we can't. There's a governor's order that allows us right? to do that. Again, when it expires yeah, in September, the allowed us to do it, so. when it expires in September, based on the pre-COVID rules, if you did it, it wasn't that simple. Like, you had a, mm -hmm. you know, again, it had to be something where you had to prove that you were doing it. Like, right. I, I feel like the convenience thing was really, pre-COVID, it was really hard to do. Yeah. It seems like if you did it, you were gonna have like you were gonna have eyes on you of like that reason you said, it better really be that. Because if it turns out it's just because no one feels like driving a town hall, mm -hmm. we're gonna have an issue at the state level. So yeah. Mm -hmm. but yeah, well, we I think, I think the COVID thing pushed us in a direction to, to, to learn to learn a lot of things. So that yeah. was that was just, just all right, thank you. Stuff yeah. that the businesses were okay, doing Danielle, just came out um, came to the forefront. The PA updates this uh, so, um, we're, so you might remember we're working with TEC to, um, uh, to do this study for Route 28, which was funded at the uh, October town meeting. Um, or was it June last year? Anyway, it's about a year. They've been, they've been on their way <laughs> from, um, doing the conceptual design and traffic study uh, for Route 28. And as part of that process, they wanted to put out a survey. Mm -hmm. um, I took a look at the survey, and I think that this is a nice, easy, simple set of questions that isn't crazy complex, but asks a few things that we want to know. If there were bike lanes, would you take advantage of them? How important do you think it is to have sidewalks? Uh, things like that. And so I don't know if you might have a chance to take a peek through it just to make sure these questions seem reasonable. I didn't see anything in here that was, you know, overly off-putting. It's nice and short. It seems like, you know, a, a, in context of some surveys we've had in the past. Does it ask all the we need to know? It just asked a few things, a few key things that the consultant wants to know as they want to go ahead with. So is this, design. the survey is going to be sent out to the general public? Yes. Okay. And you what's would, the time frame on that? Um, I, I'm not sure, but I would think it would be soon, as soon as John okay. Quickfell and I give our okay uh, for that. So, if I may, yeah, please. we've done other surveys. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice to know what the gentlemen or the what they want to get from this, so that when we're looking at the yeah. survey, it makes sense to us. Good idea. So he okay. needs to send us a couple paragraphs of what he needs, how he's going to use it. Okay. So when I review this, and I say, oh, this will work. I mean, okay. some of the studies we've done, we we did a lot of. There were a lot of things to check and a lot of answers to answer, and they didn't answer all the questions. Mm -hmm. Didn't even come close to answering all the questions. And they were too long. So <coughs> do you mean a description of what we want to get out of this provided in the survey, or do you mean for us so that we know? What, what the, 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 the company that's working on this, yes. right, the, 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 the contractor. Yes. Consultant. Consultant. Needs to, needs to know something. We need to know what he needs to know. So I think what they need to know is um, they are going to be making some basic suggestions for a new design. And that basic those basic suggestions might include things like, you know, the middle turning lane, like Redding is, you know, has, has done. Mm -hmm. And they, there are a few big things that they can do. And so they are trying to uh, have these questions answered to inform their their concepts that they're going to then prepare for us. Right. And that's... that's you know, that's where I, I want to make sure that what they're asking here is going to answer those questions for them so that the concept that they bring back to us is what we, we want also. But oh, if, sure. if, if, if I don't understand what they're looking for, then the survey 
do you think that it's <coughs> clear what they're looking for by these questions or well, I haven't really looked at oh, okay, I gotta be honest, I, I haven't really looked at this yeah, yet. Yeah, you put it in today. today. I haven't looked at it. Um, now, there's some um, questions I would love to see asked of the foot, but perhaps of the police department to say, you know, um, does incorporating a middle lane into your into the traffic patterns so there's a two lanes going each way in the middle lane for uh, for sure. uh, turns what's the effect on the number of accidents in a given area well we ho we hope that the traffic engineers have that kind of information yeah. right i mean yeah. they should be able to take crash data and statistics yeah. and like like use it to inform their number one you might as well just throw out if you were asking people in north reading ask them if they're a, a, a resident in north reading it's main street Everybody uses Main Street. Yeah, but you, know, you don't think it's helpful to know whether the, the person responding to the survey lives here or doesn't. Well, they ask you that. They ask whether you're a commuter or whether. Right. Yeah, they want to know if you are you a direct to butter. You want to know how you're going to use Main Street. But that's it. Ask that. Though. Right. So I think that's why they ask. I mean, uh, yeah. to it's me, the that's the first simple. question. It asks if what's your kind of interest. If you're a Reading, a North Reading resident, or you're a just. A yeah, I, no, I understand. It's just. If what if you're more I've than been one? down. I've been down this road once before, and, and the answers we got out of it, and the people didn't. They got to the. They got to the question, didn't answer it, and didn't go any farther. But that's um, a pretty easy question. It is an easy question. And if we heard it, that businesses want one thing and residents want something else, or butters want a third thing, then maybe that will help the consultant figure out some solutions that address some concerns. I don't know. I mean, you know to me how, it seems helpful. Go, but how does this get up to people? Just um, notice? I think they suggested, I mean, I guess it's up to us how we want to do it. It can right. be, it, we can use our usual avenues of, you know, the, the website, an email blast, we could advertise something in a transcript, we could put things out on social <coughs> media. If we wanted to, you know, put some money into it, we could do a mailing. Um, that's usually the best response we get is a mailing. Um, we usually get pretty good responses from surveys, so. Um. Well, I know there was there was a couple surveys that I I talked to people who were so long, and they were so complex. Right, but this they got is they got halfway so through it and then they went, I'm not doing anymore. Well, sure, but I think but, we'll have an easy oh, question. Well, no, 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 I, and and yeah. they're easy questions end at nine. And then what? And then you got ten and eleven, mm -hmm. and then you got extra. It's like at nine there should be a submit button. So you can just submit it then. You don't have to answer the extra. You don't have to. People will, some people will not go farther. Okay, so are you saying it's too long? Well, no, it, they can do 10 and 11, but there should be a line in there say, if you're done, submit. If you want to okay. add extra information, continue. Okay. You follow what I'm, yeah, what so I'm trying to say? Yeah, so options to submit after nine. Yes, yes. Okay. Just, just so we don't lose the people that went through and did the nine real important things, yeah, then, then any of the optional stuff. Sure, I mean, 10 is easiest. I mean, because easy Because they get scared stuff. at the yeah. optional stuff. Well, I'm scared of the optional stuff. <laughs> I mean, you well, just sometimes these things, it, if right? you don't put stuff in the optional blocks, yeah. they think you're not answering it. You haven't run into one like that? If it's optional, well, it's... If some some and it, it optional uh, kind of means you don't have to. Yeah, that's it, true, but it it's not it's not way. the survey. It's the engine that's running the survey. Yeah. It's a dumb engine. It looks oh, there's a block there. It needs to be filled in. I, there's 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 four little things there. You've got to fill one of those in because if you don't fill them in, it won't. It, it keeps sending you back. I can make sure that it's sent on a survey <coughs> platform that won't do that because okay. optional has to mean. Optional. optional. <laughs> yes, optional need to kind of be an optional. A quick comment. I mean, this reminds me of David's comments about the accessory dwelling questions and some of the prior surveys we've done. Like, the whole thing just seems to kind of lead down, like, do you want bike lanes or not? But the bike lane questions aren't low, like, yeah, would I like to have bike lanes if we just had this massive roadway? Yes, but is it going to take away a, a, a lane to the road? Is it going to be a bike lane that has little large pilings that get hit by the plows every year and never get replaced and then all of a sudden it's just as dangerous as it was before but we yeah. lost six feet on each side like the mm -hmm. I, I feel like it just it it asks questions that beg for uninformed uninformed answers like right everyone's gonna respond like yeah sure bike lane's great yeah but like what's the trade-off right the road's not getting any bigger the right away is not getting any bigger 
What's, what, and what expenses that come at, what do those look like, and yeah, what is the state to, actually going to let yeah, us do? <laughs> to your point, if you agree, if you say, no, I don't want a center lane, I want to keep four lanes, and then you say, yes, I want bike lanes, where the hell are you going to put them? <laughs> That's a useless answer, right? Yeah, right, right. There you go. I think Cable Street's a great example. They wanted a bike lane on it. They basically just repainted the breakdown lane and put a little bike guy in there. Yeah. yeah. They put up a couple share the road signs. It's no more safe for bicyclists now. Yeah, but when the road narrows back down, it disappears again. Yeah. It just goes away, right. Yeah. And then it gets to North Reading and it's gone because North Reading didn't decide yeah. to put up bike lane signs. So it's not really a bike lane anyway. I guess, I don't know, I just see this push for bike lanes. Well, I, that's, that's, kind of, that's kind of what I'm saying. It's like, this is this just thing. a push for bike lanes, is, or is it, question is it a really a, a, a re, you know, getting survey about designing the roadway? Right. You know, right. this looks like it's, uh, to bike your lanes. point, you want bike lanes. I feel like you can almost go back and just say, skip the survey, show <laughs> us an option with bike lanes and an option without bike lanes. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, in a way. There you like, go. What are we losing to gain bike lanes? Drawers. Jarvis that center lane option and what they're doing in Reading, does that provide enough room for bikes? <coughs> and if it does, I mean, it, it like actually it should. Yeah, right? no, I, I, I kind of agree with that. Like, why, why just why, why not skip over this? Just provide the options mm -hmm. that they look like. Because otherwise, I'm afraid we're just going to get options with bike lanes. Yeah, because I don't think right? the average person's not. And then we're just going to narrow the bike lanes, right? And, 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 and lanes. people who don't ride bikes are opposed to bike lanes, lanes, believe it or not. They got to fit. They don't want to. They don't want to see bikes on the road if they don't ride a bike. Some people are like that. Yeah. I mean, I work with a guy who, you know, doesn't. You know, they're in a way because bikes run at. They're supposed to be running on the rules of the road. But how many do? I had one yesterday. I was in Winthrop. She coasted through her stop sign. In, or actually, it wasn't stopped. It was red light. She co the, the car stopped. She coasted right through the red light and finally stopped just before I was, as I was taking the corner with a green light with a big, big van, just in time so I wouldn't run into her. Yeah. You know, but I was watching her. Was that in a bike lane? No, no bike lane. I just think bike lanes somewhat formalized that in that they do make they you more susceptible to getting a citation if you're in a bike lane and not operating well, your bike. The, the, the the, I, I don't know. It informs the law, but, yeah. but oh. you're right. When they're just on the side of the road, you see people, that's one of the problems. I think it, it is just more of a free-for-all approach to biking. But when it goes more formal, I think. I'll give you another example, though, too. Like with Main Street, if you do get sewer someday by in the sky and you do bring in more businesses along the roadway, People realize that like putting in the bike lane may then take away the chance for like off on street parking that would facilitate the businesses. So do you want bike lanes or do you want uh, redeveloped Main Street? Like because they may be mutually exclusive yeah. depending on how the roadway is designed. Mm -hmm. You got to think about that when you're thinking about bike lanes now. And That's right. I don't know. Maybe I'm just overthinking it, but I think that it simplifies mm -hmm. it a little too much. Especially when I not to insult the general public, but you're asking people who don't do this on a daily basis or right. see this stuff all the time. So they, again, you're just like, yes, I like, I ride my bike. It'd be great to get on my bike and be able to get out Main Street in a safe lane. It doesn't make it, doesn't make it any safer because the car is still right there. And, and I know for a fact it doesn't make it <coughs> safer. So I don't know, that'd be my comment. It's, it's, a, guess, false, it's a false sense of safety. Yeah, I agree. So we don't like the survey. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Do, do we want to, so I guess my question is, is the feedback that any set of questions really should wait until after, because they're really only doing one conceptual design. They're not doing a bunch of designs for us and then we pick. It's one design that this project encompasses. So I guess I'm trying to figure out, do we not want to do a survey and they just tell us what they think or do we want to tell them that the questions that pertain to bike lanes have to be really specific, like would you consider, you know, bike lanes to be an improvement considering, you know, a few things such as removal of traffic lanes, uh, removal of a possible option of on-street parking, should that ever become feasible? I don't know, do we want it to be, do we want like a few scenarios that they quickly ask us about? I guess I'm just trying to figure out what should we tell them we want to do with this? Like, we didn't give them the questions. They came up with the questions and said, this is the set of questions we're thinking of. What, what do you think? So I, I want to tell them 
My yes. preference would be they're designing a roadway for cars. Yeah. Give us a new design for the roadway. With sidewalks. With sidewalks. I mean, With sidewalks. That's, so that's been the law forever. You know, you're, gonna have a, you're supposed to have a sidewalk. It would be one thing if 62 was a bike path and had a bike lane the whole way. Then I'd say, well, connect six, like design a bike path yeah. to connect the two pieces where 28 intersects. Mm -hmm. What are we connecting to? There's, not, there's nothing north, there's nothing south. So it's going to create an isolated two mile bike lane. Well, I think in on 28, the, the concept here is to, is to uh, facilitate um, the people who live in the town of North Reading to give them the ability to go to the businesses uh, 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 in the town of North Reading. I mean, that's kind of the thing. So yeah. having sidewalks on both sides so that no matter which side of 28 you live on, it, it's why if you get once you get to 28 it's walkable you know both ways with crosswalks and all the amenities that go with it so that I think that's one one thing but then the second thing is if, if you're going to talk uh, bicycles then the question is where are the bicycles are the bicycles not going to ride on the sidewalk they're going to go into if you're going to really encourage bicycle traffic on 28 then you really need to dedicate some uh, some space for them because uh, they don't mix well yeah. So you're right. Either design, either design a road for cars, or design a road for bicycles, and see if you can fit the cars in. That's almost the way it is. Yeah. Right. And I'd rather prioritize the pedestrians and better sidewalks, yeah. maybe on-street yeah. parking in some places to encourage business yeah. than I would. Right. Dedicating, yeah. you know, basically but, but a lane beyond, to the roadway. But the just bikes. a personal observation. I drive back and forth on this road all day long. You know, a number of times. So. Um, and I get gas at the gas station, and I come around to pull out. And to be honest with you, very rarely is it much of a wait to pull out of that gas station. Ninety percent of the time, a lot of times, I can you can just pull right up. There's not even coming either way. You can drive right out. So that so and that's during the day. Okay, so I'm sure that rush hour things are you know. I, well, I know that rush hour things are a little different, but not radically different. So there's plenty of room on that road, I guess is the point that I'm making here. There's plenty of room in that road. So you could have single lane going both ways, yep. and I don't think you would really bother anything too much and have a turn lane in the middle. So, so the question I would want answered, and I started to ask it before, was does that center lane, turn lane, make that road safer? And because if, you, if, it, if the answer is yes, well, then you're going to go from four lanes to three lanes, now you've got some room for some uh, for a bicycle lane on either side. Or you can put parking on one side. And well, I don't. You're not going to park on 28. No, no. You're not going to park on 28. Okay. No. Well, that was all idea to slow it down. It slows yeah. it down. Yeah. Yeah. Too many mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. It's done. It's still uh, cool. You know, I mean, uh, you need some. If you're going to put a bike lane, you need some room for a bike lane. So I mean. So that would be, that, I think that, so, so again, no, but I mean, it goes back to, we already kind of know what, what people would, are going to say. Do you want a sidewalk? Well, of course. I don't want to walk in the street. I don't want to walk in the grass. Right. So do you want a bike lane? Well, if you ride a bike, your answer is going to be yes. If you're not happy with bikes, you'd say no. So, I mean, you know, so that, that so, yeah, so, 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 so to your point, it might be, make sense to, like you said, do a concept and see if you like it. Mr. Chairman, too, I would say what's almost more valuable than trying to draw, you know, this 2.6 or 4 mile stretch as a plan is uh, just a few sections really showing what what a, cro a cross section of here's a here's your turn lane, here's your travel lanes, here's your curb, here's your sidewalk. That's how much space that's allowed or is present in that right of way, and you can do X or or why? It, it, so it just instead of drawing the yeah. whole street, oh yeah, so really you just do a cross section. Common, yeah, you don't you have know, to do the whole thing. You don't have to do the whole thing. A couple just of cross sections, like a cross like, section, like an intersection, kind of like elevations. Yeah. Yeah. You know. But so anyway, so that's what I would. Yeah, we've maybe, never talked to these guys. You know, it's better in a way. Is that right away consistent? Yeah, well, well, is it consistent? Is it consistent? They're doing just like yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always way with this. But there's going to be some areas. So you know, and I. Well, well, the difference would be is, is the difference would be the cross section, bicycle. like at an intersection with lights, yeah. Yeah. Right. and, and the then the cross bicycle. section with oh. just an intersecting roadway, and then a cross section with is nothing but just road. Right? That, right. I, I've yeah. kind of handled all that. Yeah. Yeah. Here yeah. are three or four different scenarios yeah. that that that, that happen. Really yeah. okay. yeah. Are we telling them we're not interested in, in bicycles? Well, no, I'm not, I mean, no, no, I think, but I agree. I I agree with Ryan said they've concentrated a lot of questions on bicycles. Okay. 
you know. Just afraid this I survey think, is going to result in, yes, we're trying to design with bikes. Yeah, so we're that's, yeah. that survey, I kind of agree more with Brian. It's almost like a waste of time. Like, I, I agree, with, I like the idea of bike, but why even bother to do the survey? Just show what it would look like. Yeah. You know, because I think everyone in general would agree that it'd be great if we could fit that in. Let's, right. let's see if can it we, fits in. Can we in, have these guys know? come in and talk to us? Or? Maybe I can ask. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they've been pretty much in data collection mode, um, and yeah. just as far as like traffic counts. And I'd stuff, say yeah, before I we put this out, before we put this out, yeah, I, I, I don't see this as going to solve let's any see that. big let, things. Let, let's have that. Let's see if we can have them show up, and we'll okay. see if we can either. I mean, if you think about modify it. that, modify that, um, um, modify that 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 survey some. So that we can take the bicycle questions and put them as bicycle questions, and then the pedestrian questions as pedestrian, you know, okay. and, and and try and get it, try and get them a little more focused on what what we really need to know. Okay. If you think yep. about it, there's a, there is a sidewalk on one side. It may not be paved or asphalted, but there's a sidewalk all the way down Main Street from one end to the other. Yeah. Well, there's places where there isn't a sidewalk where you can walk in the parking area though. And right. walk back out. So I mean, I don't think they're necessarily, you know, trying to put in leading questions on bikes in particular, but I do think that their scope of work, bike and pedestrian safety, was highlighted in their scope of work yeah. that they were given. So I mean I think they're responding to that, but it's yeah. like perfectly legitimate if we want to say and we want a different type of emphasis right. on bike versus yeah. other And this is this is doing a lot of looking at what is today. Mm -hmm. We don't want what's today. We wanna know we wanna make that road so it works. 50 years into the future. Because well, sure. how often do you use the road with a bike? Today. How often do you walk down Main Street today? That's what these questions ask. Mm -hmm. There's no real businesses on Main Street that are walkable in between these. But I think they're trying to establish uh, one, <coughs> if we want bike facilities in the future, let's first get a baseline. How do people feel about it today? I think it's pretty obvious how people feel about it today, but I think they kind of need to establish, okay, X okay. percent of people feel this way. No, 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 I'm not saying that we shouldn't change the questions. I no, 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 no. I, it's I just, I think they're trying to say, establish what we have now, how people feel about it, and then ask in the future, what would you like to see instead? I mean, I think that's the goal. If they're not getting there, then they're not getting there. We can tell them that. I'm yeah. just, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think they need to, hmm. well. Yeah. Yeah, I'll ask them to come in. That's fine. Yeah, see if we can have them come in and we'll try to focus them a little better on, on, on see what the uh, um, see what they're trying to do. It'd be helpful to know what the deliverable is. Because if it's just one one section, then yeah. <laughs> I feel like just getting one with just the bikes is going to be not give us the full picture, right? Yeah. And David's point, a few different options are. Okay, Vincenzo, please. Okay. Um, to piggyback on Mr. Carroll's point, I do agree too that uh, um, we've uh, we've lowered sewer from pie in the sky to you know maybe just sky. You know we got rid of the pie, so we're getting lower. We're getting lower, we're getting there. Um, but I do agree <laughs> that if you look, if you look at even Reading is a great example. If you noticed. Uh, the bike lane is missing from their center. Mm -hmm. uh, when you go to most towns, there is no bike lane. Yeah, Lexington um, just added it, actually. And it's, it's a disaster. It's, yeah. So meaning that, but there's a reason why. And another thing, too, it's something where, to me, like, the bike lanes I bike, right? If you're going through a center, I... I can tell you this, a bike lane will encourage, like, you can go pretty fast on a bike. I get up to like a 20 mile an hour, and I agree with Mr. Hayden that no one follows it, and you will have people, especially if we have a center, that will become a problem. If I'm right walking with my six year old, and there's somebody going through, you know, at, at a pretty good clip. So again, I'm not saying it's a big thing, but I do agree that like, it seems that some of the most uh, walkable communities seem to be missing bike lanes in the most walkable part of town, which if we're trying to one day do that, I, I do. So that's just my ad that like, I agree. If it even remotely could make getting businesses in because we're gonna need some buy-in for the sewer, I, I, we, just don't, we just don't need to pile on. So that, that, that should be, a, a, again, people will disagree, but from my perspective, where I'm really trying to push sewer and get everybody on board, like. We don't need another reason for a business to say no. I'm not going to put my business here and then compete with my outside tables with, you know, 
bikes go by. Yeah. So people walk thinking. around tables. They don't. They walk around them. Bikes will. You never know what they'll do. Correct. <clears throat> and actually, there was an article too that I'll take you on. I mean, today, um, there was a survey from readers that maybe Boston should be more walkable. And um, there was also a study that showed that all where they put the bike lanes around all the parks, they don't get used and now just causing traffic jams. Bike lanes are empty and now you just added 20 minutes of traffic. That's all you really did. You know why? Because we do not have the weather here for bikes. Six months out of the year, you can't ride a bike, right? mm -hmm. except if you're hardcore. And if you put a protected bike lane, then you can't plow it because you got to that's right. Oh, no, you can plow it. You just have to hire somebody you to do it manually. Get one of those special little yeah. plows. So, again, I mean, again, this is a CPC, but I figured just. Yeah. No, that's okay. It's no, I think, that I think, I and you guys brought it up. I think you're probably, I think you're probably echoing what we're, what we're doing. We're, we're looking at this and saying this is, this is a referendum on bike lanes, not on traffic. And that may need, may not be the best. It's <laughs> traffic. It's traffic plan. flow on Main Street is yeah. what we're, we're we want really to talk looking to them at about what their plan is and, and safe pedestrian travel, and making it business friendly, right? And, and yeah, business friendly. And business friendly is walking from place to place, right? Also, now. are we working? And it looks like it's making good progress on the actual the bike path. I don't know what the status of that feasibility. It seems like is. there were a couple of things. I mean, uh, Mr. Walmer gave an update where it mm -hmm. seems like they're getting. I mean. It, it, like that's something that has support. We just have to, you know. That the one down, down the uh, Ipswich. To do, yeah. I mean, but again, from day to dammers. Because then it becomes. <coughs> are we doing it for recreation or are we doing it for transportation? Right. Recreation. Yeah. Recreation. Yeah. Because if we're doing it for transport, because if we're just doing it for recreation, I think the. I, don't know, I think doing it on a main street, it's like well, you know, and you're right, Hable Street. Whether or not they have bike lanes, I almost die every morning. <laughs> Yeah, when it snowed, yeah. the bike. Oh, is that you that I, I, I no. yeah. I'm only kidding. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I think uh, I think we're gonna let this lay for now, and we'll see if we can get these people in. We'll talk to them. Yeah, I'll invite them in um, to our next meeting, and I I do think the scope of work they were given included all kind of complete street elements. If we want there to be significantly less emphasis on bike lanes, I think we can let them know. Yeah. But I think they're kind of going on. Right, so we should see, you know. this. we should know what the scope of work is. Yeah. That, you know, that's kind of kind of what I, when I was, when I started this was, yeah. where are they coming from? Yeah. yeah. You know, we got to know so you can design this. And if it's, if, and if it's from that scope of, of work, then, Maybe we have an issue with it. I think we might have well, some of it. I mean, that can be changed. I mean, most of what they've done so far is collect traffic right. data, and that's right. supposed to inform what the new design yeah. would right. look like. And I think they are kind of going on the assumption, as most people do when they talk about pedestrian safety, is they kind of include bike safety in it. But if that's something that we would rather they step away from or be really specific about one bike question, like do you, how much of an emphasis do you want placed on biking? Yeah. Yeah. I'd like them would to, you I'd use like it to, daily would you use it ever? Or yeah. Or yeah. Never. Like I'd like yeah. them to answer questions about, about the bike lanes that you talked about by the parks that are just great traffic jams. I'd like to say, I'd like to ask them, you know, why, you know, this doesn't seem to be working, so why are we doing this? Right. Mm. They may also yeah. have past examples other four lane roads that they've mm -hmm. renovated. I mean, except presumably they don't have the sections on this one yet, but if they had right. some other ones that might kind of spur some discussion about what, I mean, it's, what you know, looks pull, good and what. Well, there's some like that. You're right. One but pulling cross one sections out is easy. Over on 114, where they put the third lane in, there are a couple of roads that are very difficult to get out, and having the third, having that middle lane. To oh, that's great! You only have to cross one lane of traffic. Yeah, at a time. To do yeah. it. you pull into that lane, and then you can yeah. then you can merge with this the, the yeah. traffic that's I going forty five. So there are places where that where that works really well. Does everyone honk at you when you do it though? Everyone always honks at you when they do it. Yeah, occasionally they, they do it because they don't know what you're doing. Because Perhaps they don't know how to use it. Client, you can't wait till the last minute. You gotta get out there. <laughs> no, the no, problem is people go the same way I am. I know, think I know. that I'm about to cut them off. Yeah, yeah. they don't understand how it's used. That's yeah. the problem. They never rotaries. And then they wonder why it's so easy when you don't cut them off, and they you manage to blend. Yeah. Right? And then they go, oh, that's why. <laughs> it's like rotaries. Who was taught when you were in driver's ed how to use a rotary? Who was taken in a rotary when you were in driver's ed with a driving teacher here? No one, no one. I've asked the kids that are, that are taking drivers to, you know, of course, they don't. 
take you in the rotaries. You never get out. Yeah. <laughs> it's it, it, it it's very easy to use a, these rotaries, <laughs> yeah. you know. And little little handout that I got in Ireland that like works here, except you go in the other way. That's all. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah, when I was in England, I ran that problem. None of the rotary didn't get out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there is there is there are a couple like that in Italy. <laughs> yeah. Well. All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll um we'll um have them come in. And we'll try to we'll try to find out exactly what they're what they're plan what they're trying to find out. We only got one thing left. And one we think we got. Yeah, we only got one but thing. But we don't left. we don't have a full. A full well, again, loss. we don't have a full There's board. But do you, do we want to wait? I mean, still oh, again. Um, although we did talk to Jeremiah a little bit about it at the. We did. At the. Um, at no, but this the is town. just this is yeah. It's kind of tough to do liaisons unless we reorganize. And yeah. We need to do that. All right. Well then. I will uh, turn this uh, turn the meeting over to you, Danielle, and we'll do our reorganization. You're, you would like to do it tonight? Yeah, I, okay. yeah. But I, I think if, if we hadn't had a, a good conversation <laughs> at the town meeting, okay. which you were not part of, but we we, That's we, we all we all. <laughs> That's so. Okay, um, and I will uh, take nominations for the position of chair. I nominate Mr. Pierce. I second that. Is there any discussion? Other nominations. I'm sorry. Oh, other nominations. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Any other nominations? Okay, hearing none. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? None. Uh, Mr. Pierce is the chair. Okay, uh, I'll entertain nomination for vice chair. Back up. Your second, if you will. Second <laughs> nominated, Chris? Yes. And you second. You second it. Chris accepts. Yes. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Yeah. Opposed. Yeah. The record show. We need. I don't know what we do without. <laughs> we need a clerk. <laughs> I know. We have a good system working here. We really do. So, um, Ryan, are you okay staying as clerk? I'm fine with that. Plus, uh, Mr. Redloff would like to step in. All right, so uh, we have a nomination for Ryan Clerk and uh, Mr. Webloff has seconded. Yeah. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Let's show all in favor. And <laughs> next year we'll get, uh, we'll get Jeremiah into the mix. Yeah, yeah. You know, give him a year. To, I, think, I think from what I understood is he wants a year to understand what's going on. I don't blame him. I, I, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you, you know, I mean, my first term, I hardly said much of anything. I listened the whole time. But I had my some first really great people on. I had some really great people on the board. You know. Oh, I know those people. Rick Askinace. Yeah. He was just one of the best people in the world. He was very good, and I learned a lot from him. So my first term. So. You just realized it. It's like, oh. Yeah. Mrs. Romeo nominated me vice chair my first term. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And I think I was vice chair for the first term. <laughs> she got somebody to second me. So, uh, so wait, let's, uh, we heard the drink at four. Just one time. So, do we, we want to make, well, we should, maybe we can do this the next time. So, oh, the liaisons. You, well, you could keep them the same. I mean, well, John, oh, Cody, exactly. Jonathan Cody's not here anymore. Yeah, yeah, Bill's yeah, yeah. not here anymore. Bill Benavance isn't here anymore either. Yeah, that doesn't so. help. <laughs> we could do them at the next meeting. Yeah, why don't we do them at the next meeting and then yeah, we'll tell Jeremiah to look at these and see if, if he'll take over something. If he wants to take one, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I can mention Because we, we, do we do need to, to you know, um, parse them out a little bit. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll keep the, the historic district and the historic commission. I mean, that's not a problem for me, and I can still do the finance committee. Um, yeah, I'll keep every. I'll keep everything I got. And, so. and obviously the EDC, since I am the EDC rep right now. Right. <laughs> we doing liaisons tonight or not? Not really. No. Like no. Well, it's, you know, well, we, just, we, we just <laughs> there's a whole bunch that still need to be. Oh, I know. Renewed. So I know. yeah, we'll wait on it. So we'll do them at the next meeting. Okay. Uh -huh. um, are we signing plans for 200 with the pot? Oh, we have plans. Um, don't we have to wait for the Board of Appeals to? Have, yeah. Uh, I don't think you have We've to. already approved them. Yeah, I don't think you have to wait. You can, I mean, you can if you want to, but I don't think you have to. I mean, 
they can't build it if they don't get the board. Jeremiah, <laughs> Jeremiah voted on that. Ryan didn't. Jeremiah asked. I, I, I think any of you can endorse them mm-hmm. as it's board members. Plans. We don't know. It's not like it's not a supplement. Yeah, it's just it's just it's the it's the approved stamp basically. It's, okay. It doesn't have a lot of base. Right, it's yeah. totally up to you. If you want to do it next time, you can do it. Next time. Yeah, they're not going anywhere. Let's do it no. next time. Okay. Well, yeah, because they're not going to. Yeah. Why don't you put it on the agenda for next time? Because I don't. It's really not on our agenda either. So. Okay. Speaking of next time. Yeah. Speaking of our next meeting, why don't we talk a little about schedule? When is everyone <laughs> free to meet next? All right. I'm assuming uh, the week of July 4th is not going to be a good time. Not for him. Nope. Not or me. And I won't be here. But I, I mean, you can have a meeting without me. That's fine. You mean July 6th? Oh, uh, that's my birthday. Be July 6th. Is it really? It is. What's that? I'm not going to be here July 6th. It's my birthday. Oh, I've, no. I've been on, I've been in this room or the room down the hall many times on my birthday. I refuse this year. <laughs> Good for you. Well, I'm gone the first two weeks and I'm sure Warren is busy. The first hey, well, I'm going, the okay. sec- I'm going the 12th through the 16th, so. Uh, the twentieth is a CPC meeting, it says. So. Should we just make the twentieth our next meeting then? We could do that. I mean, we could meet. Can we meet on the 29th? That would be in two weeks of June. Uh, 28th. Uh, yeah, 29th. Sorry. You don't really have anything. Nothing. I mean, the only things that I we don't have any applications. Um, I I did, and I was going to do this tonight. I just wanted to run through a brief list of the things that we are considering for the warrant for October, and I wanted to try to maybe prioritize with you a little bit to see if we want to do all of those things or if we want to choose a few to focus on. Um, we can talk about that on the 29th. You want to, you you want want to do like it's a workshop on the 29th? This um, sounds like well, well actually, I, I want to remind, um, I don't know if I talked to you about this, Danielle. I think I did a little bit. Um, Jerry Noel has uh, three items he would like us to try to help him out with. Mm-hmm. That for, did you talk to him already? He's mentioned to me that yeah, accessory dwelling time. units and kitchens, etc. He wants yeah, to talk to us. Yeah, he's got, and he's got actually three different items. Mm-hmm. But uh, I told him to, to put them in writing and get them to you okay. so that we could um, um, so that we could look at them and maybe some of it's just you know clean up, if you will, mm-hmm. to make things a little clearer for him. And, um, um, Maybe that would work on the 29th. I'm doing yeah, like I a mean, little workshop. Yeah. yeah. You know, we, and, and maybe get Jerry to come in. <coughs> Why don't I ask Jerry if he's available that night? Yeah. And yeah. if he oh, is, well, we can you know, we can, we can we can do mm-hmm. we can do his items first. Yeah. And then send him on his way. and We can finish up with what you've got. Sure. As, as a workshop and and. Be Let, done with it. Let's do a workshop on town meeting related things, and I can list what they are, and we can talk out those topics and see. Okay. I don't know how if that works for everybody else here. The 29th. Works for me. Yeah. The last Friday of the month. Uh, last Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday of the month. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. June 29th. Okay. Yeah. So what I had, and tell me if you need <coughs> to add anything, and we can discuss further things on the 29th too, but um, inclusionary zoning, where yeah. we require a certain percentage of affordable yeah. for every multifamily, accessory dwelling units, um, the affordable housing overlay district parcels um, to have an RFP for disposition for development. Yeah, I was, uh, was going to ask that. Um, Carpenter <coughs> Drive, which it would be great to get our small group together soon to see where we're going with that. But that would be another possibility. Um, it's all right. <laughs> so those, I, I have those four things as being priorities. Can we, you know, can we, uh, <laughs> just talk this right For our small group that you're talking about, can we Zoom that? We probably can. Do you want me to, do you want me to just verify that? And we don't have I to have, have a, a. I have an instant update for you if you'd like. Oh. Yes. yes. <laughs> As of right now, the latest language will extend the provision to, and don't quote me on this because they can change it six times before they vote, April right. 1st, 2022, where the chair of whatever the board is will decide whether to do it in person or hybrid. No select board approval needed. Cool. Does it have to be at least hybrid? Can it be fully remote? Or is that no longer? Yeah, but you're not we, you're not talking a full meeting. You're talking a subset. It can be fully remote, my understanding, like before. Yep. Oh, I thought we were talking about our meeting on the 29th. No, 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 no. 
you have apples, oranges, and I'm sorry, I, I don't really. So know. we got three different things going on. Okay. One, of them, <laughs> one of them is <laughs> is our small group for Copy the Drive, and then one of them is uh, Zoom meetings for um, for everybody. Right. You know, you know, for like if we decide that for the for the, for a, a regular yeah. CPC meeting. Yeah. Carpenter Drive is not a posted public meeting anyway, so right. I think we can right. do that. You can Zoom that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Was that what you were asking about, or? Yeah. No. Well, but then he, when Tenzo came in with our with the update that we could till April of twenty two, you said. Yeah. We, oh, the no. chair can make. But it could change. Can make an option to uh, can ch choose the option of having a fully remote meeting. Okay. So okay. that would be. Yeah. But you weren't thinking of that for June 29th. You were thinking. No. About no. 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 Oh, I thought okay, come okay, in, come okay. in for that okay. June twenty. That was the third. It's just going to be us. Meeting. Yeah. That was the third thing we were talking about. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about how the three different things all at once here. We got them all conflated here. So. Yeah. Okay. And, I, and I think but, that's but one night that, you know, we don't really. Vincenzo, thank you very much for coming. Good night, Vincenzo. You're welcome. Have a nice night. Thank you. You too. Yeah. All right, we will. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know if it, it would be one that we need to. to uh, I can talk to Phil about yeah, that. Yeah, talk to Phil about you know what he feels about that because it's going to be a workshop. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's going to we're going to be throwing stuff around. It's going to be hard for people to follow. There's you know, it's no, it's nothing formal. What, on the 29th? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It's up to you if you want. I mean, you don't have to do every single one. Right. That way, it's. I mean, if if he wants to come and do it, you can come do it. I mean, we, we don't, you know, we're not hide anything because the door is always open for the public to come into yeah. our meetings. But I would make arrangements beforehand if right. we were going to do it, so. Yeah. yeah, I don't think that's a problem. I mean, you never know, you know. Um, if he wants to do it, I mean, wants to, you know, broadcast it, it would be okay. okay. We should have a, well, we, we, we should, we'll have an agenda anyway, so yeah. kind of have some items on it. Yeah. And, 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 and really, we, 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 since some of these are items that Jerry's bringing up that may be of interest to builders and people in town, mm -hmm. I think we should we need to keep it open. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, it's an open meeting, absolutely. Now, if we discuss all of the articles, um, if we discuss Carpenter Drive and whether or not we would want that to be on the warrant, will the neighborhood not be happy? Well, actually, I think I, I think our discussion on on Carpenter Drive is going to be just a small group. I mean, we want to I, mean, into it yeah. I, I think you do a small group and then it, whatever you come up with, then you involve. Yeah, you're right. I, maybe that's not a get, good item get, for the yeah. 29th. Maybe that's just between the five yeah, of us. Yeah, I would. As far I would. As next you guys could zoom that in your small group. Yeah, you're right. Let okay. that. Let it go that way. You come up with an idea. If, if you come up with something, then bring it to a regular meeting. Okay. Yes. So we'll talk about the other <coughs> items and all that. Yeah. Okay. No, that that makes sense. Um, is there anything else for town meeting that I'm missing? I mean, we could bring it up on the 29th and talk about that. Yeah, I right off the top of my head, I don't I have any sense right now. Um, okay. Great. It doesn't mean I won't remember something. Else. <laughs> That's fine. We can you can bring it up that night and yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So we're meeting on June twenty ninth and the third week of July. Right. So the 20th of July? That sounds right. Yes, July 20th. No, June 29th. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I meant the next one after oh, yeah. the 20th, sorry. It, it, yeah. It's a holiday of some yeah. kind, but not for us. No, not. it's each. I guess that's it for tonight. It's kind of all I had for updates, too. So right. Those things that I just talked about were kind of that's all updates. updates. So, okay. Yeah. We're done, then. We're done. Okay.